Travel is an amazing way to experience new places. Wellness is being physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy. The Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel Podcast is all about exploring travel and wellness. I'm Barbara Tuckett, your host and the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. Part of our emotional and mental health is connection, and I believe that traveling with the intention to connect can bring wellness to your life. In this podcast, I explore traveling for connection, connecting with places and experiences, connecting especially with people, the people you're traveling with, the people you meet, and especially connecting with yourself. I want your travel to improve your wellness. Hey, welcome. I'm happy to be here with you today, and hopefully you are excited like I am, to jump in and talk about today's topic. Today, I'm going to be talking about Ireland. And I have previously, you know, talked about and posted about Ireland before, so it's not the first time. But today, I'm going to be doing it a little bit different. I'm going to give you some tips and just fun info about the country in general, about Ireland. And then I'm going to share a great itinerary that I put together for some clients who are traveling to Ireland soon. So I thought that might be kind of a fun way to um, enjoy this amazing country. And um, you might be wondering why I'm kind of focusing on some European destinations these days. It's because I just love it. I love that Europe is open now during COVID for so long, they had all these different restrictions and it was just super hard to go there and it was very restricted to travel there and all the things. And so now they are just like wide open and it's just so great that we have all this opportunity to travel to Europe and the UK. So here we are, let's jump in and talk about Ireland. Um, I have been thinking about Ireland quite a bit lately because I've been putting together itineraries for clients and just kind of thinking about this amazing green little country. It's a magical country full of leprechauns and luck and all kinds of folklore and stories and it's really fun. Um, So today I'm going to just share some random Irish info and tips for you and Um, Like I said, then share a sample itinerary that you could possibly do. These clients are flying into London. They chose to fly into London because it was going to be less expensive than trying to fly into Dublin or even Edinburgh because they're including a little bit of Scotland in their trip. Um, So they're flying into London, staying there for a night, going to Scotland for a minute, and then um, doing most of their trip in Ireland. So we'll get to that at the end or, you know, later on. But Just wanted to kind of give you a little overview of what their itinerary looks like. Okay, here is something interesting about Ireland. They have colored doors all over the place in Dublin, especially. Um, If you open like a travel guide or get onto any kind of a travel guide website, you will start to see these colored doors popping up. Once you arrive in Dublin, you will see them everywhere. And the origin of the colored doors is that during the 18th century, Dubliners began to build these elegant, amazing, beautiful Georgian homes, like right outside the walls of the original medieval town. So they were expanding the town and the builder and the covenants in the city at the time just required that they all were the doors were painted all exactly the same color. And so as soon as they moved in, the Dubliners started painting their front doors, whatever color they wanted to to kind of differentiate themselves from the other homes that were, um, you know, right around them. Since all of the homes looked really similar, they wanted their doors to look different. So we have all these different colored doors all throughout Dublin. Another thing that is a fun little mention, which you probably have heard of if you have heard of Ireland and different cultural things, is the Irish pubs. Irish pubs have totally existed forever. They have existed for like around a thousand years. I am not even kidding. For decades, the hub is like a center for cultural gatherings and like social gatherings. Um, People from all walks of life come to these pubs. They have food, they have drink, 
They have sports, so a little bit like a sports bar um, and traditional Irish music. So all of these things are found in the pubs. And usually the menu at a pub is like regular and straightforward and has like these classic Irish dishes. So go visit a pub or two or three um, during your visit to Ireland and you will be able to like really dive in and connect with the culture and the local people. So it's really fun and the stories and the lore and everything. Um, it's really kind of an amazing way to have this fun social experience with the people in Ireland. Okay, golf. You cannot mention Ireland and or Scotland without mentioning golf, I feel like. Um, Ireland is a golfer's paradise. They have world-class courses in some really spectacular places and just um, championship courses and um, unusual locations. And they're just like golf courses all over the place in Ireland. So every year, this is a fun statistic, over 240,000 golfers from all over the world come to Ireland. And Ireland is not a very big country, so that is a lot of golfers. Um, but most of Ireland's golf courses are open year round. So that's also a nice thing because you don't have to come just during the summer, which is high season. You can come pretty much any time of year if you would like to go golfing. Okay, what about dolmens? Let's talk about dolmens. It's spelled, if you can't see my screen, it's spelled D-O-L-M-E-N, dolmen. Um, the dolmens are these, what they call the stone monuments in Ireland. And there are seriously almost 200. There's about 190 by last count. They are known by lots of different names. They're known as Cromlex, Giant's Graves, Diarmuid, and Grian's Beds. And they're also known as stone tables, which is an easy title for them. They usually have like an entrance feature, which is known as like a portal, quote unquote. Um, although sometimes in some dolmens, there's a stone that's blocking the portal. So you can't actually like walk inside underneath. Um, and it looks like it really does look like a big stone table with two stone sides and then a stone um top, like roof on the top. The most characteristic feature is the massive roof, like it's just this flat roof stone, which is usually weighing tons, of course, and it it's, they're often kind of sloped so that because they're balancing between the two rocks underneath them. So that is dolmens. So if you go to Ireland, look for the dolmens out, especially out in the countryside. All right, Ireland, is a great destination for adventure travel. And I love this because adventure travel is part of the wellness travel umbrella that I love to help people with. Um, Ireland is a great place to go hiking, cycling, climbing, like to just really explore the outdoors. So a few um, suggestions I have are places, the Mourn Mountains, and they have lots of good hiking. There's the Wicklow and the Kerry Ways, and they have lots of their um, like highways that kind of traverse stunning mountainscapes. And so you can not really, not highways for driving, but like paths. Um, so you can hike a lot on those areas as well. The legend says for every step you take, a fairy, a warrior, a banshee, or a ghost has taken it before you. So that's a fun thing. If you go adventuring in Ireland, you can know that um, you're taken good care of because one of these creatures has already traveled there before you. Okay, so those are just kind of a few random fun, I guess, facts and things to know about Ireland. And for my clients that are traveling there, like I said, they are flying into London, but then they're flying home from Dublin at the end of their trip just to get better pricing. Um, if you did this same itinerary, you could take off the night at London in the beginning and then just start from Edinburgh if you wanted. So let's, let me switch my screen that I'm sharing and, oh, whoops. Let's, there we go. <laughs> I am, 
okay at um, the tech, but I am not perfect at it. So let's jump in and I would love to share with you what they are doing on their Scotland and Ireland trip. So this could be a sample trip that you might want to take something like this, or we could always tweak it because it's just this individualized um, itinerary for them. So we could always tweak it so that it fit more what you wanted to do. Okay, so of course, first day they just fly, their flight departs for London. And then on the second day, flights to Europe are overnight flights. And so the flight arrives on the next day into London and then they'll get transportation to their hotel. They are going to stay at a property called the Claremont London Hotel, which is in Victoria. It's right in the London city center, really beautiful near a metro station. Um, they just, it, they've been freshly refurbished, the hotel has, but it's, it's um, the building dates back to 1862. And so it's got this beautiful Victorian style combined with like just modern opulence, like the bright lights of the modern, <laughs> modern century that we live in. Um, so it's just, it's gorgeous. It's got this dramatic entrance hall and it's got these beautiful staircases and this um, amazing um, overlook balcony. Anyway, it's really close to some great stuff. There's like, it's like a 10 minute walk to Buckingham Palace or 13 minute walk to Hyde Park. Westminster Abbey is 16 minutes away. So all of those things are a mile or less away. So it's a really great, really, really great um, location. Um, all the rooms have AC, they've got Wi-Fi, they've got a coffee machine and then little complimentary mini bar with water and soft drinks and snacks. Um, they have toiletries, iron and ironing board. Um, and they include breakfast at the hotel. So it's really a fun, amazing place to be. As you can see, um, I'm showing a couple of pictures of the hotel right now. And the entry is this beautiful, gorgeous, um, refurbished Victorian entrance. But then as you look at the room, it's very modern, very sleek designs, um, very light. And then you can see a couple of the views from the hotel and even a picture of what the breakfast looks like. So this is an amazing, they're gonna stay here just one night in London. And then the next day, I don't have any activities planned for them. They'll just kind of be on their own. They can walk or take the tube and um, do a little bit of sightseeing on their own. Um, the next day they will, take the train to Edinburgh. And then once they get to Edinburgh, they're going to stay three nights in Edinburgh, just do a little sightseeing around this area before they head to Ireland. The hotel that they are staying in Edinburgh is called the Ibis Edinburgh Center. Um, and it's in Edinburgh Old Town, really close to the street called the Royal Mile. Um, they're just, they're modern rooms. They've got TVs in them. Um, the hotel has a bar, which has light meals and snacks 24 hours a day. Um, it's, it's really a good location in Edinburgh. You can see I'm showing some pictures, some nice modern rooms and, um, beautiful little courtyard where you can eat and, um, also an eating area inside. So they will stay in this hotel for three days. Okay. So once they travel to Edinburgh, I don't have any plans for them for that day. But then the next day, they get to take the Jacobite train. Now, you may or may not have heard about the Jacobite train. What this is, it's the Harry Potter train. So you get to go on this Harry Potter themed excursion into the Scottish Highlands. So you leave from Edinburgh and then you just sightsee all along the way. Um, so you get to go to this fishing village called Maleg. Um, and it is, it's called the Jacobite Steam Train, which is the Hogwarts Express. And you get to go along the, the Glen Finnan Viaduct, which you see in the movies and all of the dramatic scenery and everything. Um, there's Wi-Fi on board. And so even though you're, you're on the Harry Potter train, you're, you know, not back in the dark ages or anything. Uh, you'll have a Scottish speaking guide 
to guide you all along this day. And um, basically, you just get to go by all of these fun, fun stops. I'm not going to go through all of them, but all of these fun little stops along the way and ride on the Harry Potter train. So it's really cool. This fun, fun experience. So that is a one day experience. Hey, the next day they will be in Edinburgh and I've just suggested that they do some sightseeing. Like they maybe see the Edinburgh Castle, Prince's Street, um, hike up to Arthur's Seat or see Old Town. They can do a Harry Potter walking tour. I recently did um, a whole, um, I guess, post on what you could do in Scotland and some fun things to do in Scotland. And so, you know, you are welcome to look into that if you wanted to have more info about Scotland. Okay, so that is their final night in Edinburgh. And then the next day, they get a flight from Edinburgh to Dublin. The um, There is a train, but the train is takes way more time. So let's fly you there just to get you there quickly. So they will only be in Dublin for one night and they stay at the Rio Plaza Gresham in Dublin. And it's, it's really famous. It's probably the best known hotel in all of the city. It's right in the heart of city. I'm really close to all of the fun um, city center things, really show, close to the shopping, <coughs> um, really close to be able to get on the public transportation and go different places. So um, the, the hotel is really great. It's in this older building but again it is furnished just beautifully on the inside really nice um clean modern beautiful property okay so they will stay overnight one night in dublin can do some sightseeing there and then they will get on a train now what they are going to do most of the rest of the time in dublin is they are going to do kind of like a um i guess a train tour type thing when they'll get to stay a few nights in different places along the way. So um, I call it the Ireland rail tour and they'll be in first class rail um, every time they are on the train. So the first part of this trip, they are going to see the Blarney Castle, Hobe and Killarney. So they, they leave at 7 a.m. from Dublin and then they get on their train and they'll go you know, outside of the city, past the suburbs that are out there. Um, and then they will get to go to the town of Kildare. And they will they will see the Curra of Kildare, which is famous for its race course, which is home, of, home to the Irish Derby. And so you'll pass that, you'll pass the cathedrals, and um, then stay on the train, and go to Port Le Leisha and all of these fun little Limerick Junction and um, right by where the Cliffs of Moor are. Some people will leave the train right there to go to the Cliffs of Moor. So anyway, so all of that, you go through all of that and by 9.30 in the morning, um, you're at the Cork Kent station and you from there, you switch trains to go to the Blarney Village, the Blarney Castle and Gardens, and you'll get to kiss the Blarney Stone and um, shop and have some lunch and everything. And then from Blarney, you'll go to Cobe. And Cobe is a little town. Get to see some of the city, the little town of Cobe. Go to St. Coleman's Cathedral um, and then get back on the train and um, learn a lot of like really great oh historical things and um, the things that I guess led to Irish people emigrating, especially going to the US. Um, anyway, and then from Cobe, you go into Killarney and Killarney is where the hotel is and you will end up staying in Killarney for two nights. So you'll stay in a hotel in Killarney for two nights. Um, so from Killarney, the next day, you'll get up and you will go on the Ring of Kerry tour. So this is also a train tour. 
Um, lots of stops along the way. You'll stop for morning tea, you'll stop for lunch, you'll stop for photos. Um, so all along the, all around the, what's called the Ring of Kerry. And the Kerry Bog Village um, is the only one of its kind in Europe. Um, it, it really gives like historical insight into how people lived and worked when they were in rural Ireland way back in the 18th century. And you'll get to go to Skellig Rocks, which is some islands. That is where the Star Wars movie called The Force Awakens, that was where it was mostly filmed. So you'll get to see there, you'll get to make lots of photo stops, um, stop at a village called Sneem. Anyway, so very, very amazing, beautiful lakes of Killarney, um, Killarney's National Park. Like you get to go through all of these areas see all of these incredible things and then back to your hotel in Killarney for the night. Okay, then the next day um, you'll get up and depart for Limerick. And on the way to Limerick, well, Limerick has about 90,000 people and it is a super old city. The city was founded in 1197, the year 1197. So it is even older than London. Um, so you'll cross the Shannon river. You'll see King John's castle, which was completed in the year 1200. And anyway, get to really explore the town of Limerick. And then after that, you go to Bunratty castle and folk park, and then go to O'Connor's pub in Doolin. Remember we talked about the pub and then back to the cliffs of Moher. Now, the Cliffs of Moher are the highest sea cliffs in Europe. They are really amazing. And so you'll get to get out and really um, enjoy the Cliffs of Moher. Um, on the way back, you take the coast road a lot of the way back to Galway. And so you'll stop for pictures and um, stop at a national park, the Burren National Park. And it's just really beautiful. Then in the center of Galway City is where you will end up. And that is um, the end of that day. So at this, for this portion of the trip, you'll stay in a Galway hotel for two nights. So you've already been touring kind of the area around Galway. You'll stop at a Galway hotel that night and stay. Okay, the next morning you depart Galway and you get to go um, to some other amazing little towns and cities. Um, Moycullen is a little village that you get to go to. And um, it's the gateway to the Connemara Opens, the, the golf courses. So that's really fun. Um, there's a cottage, a replica of the cottage um, that was in that old 1950s John Wayne movie called The Quiet Man. So it was filmed here at the Connemara Crossroads and you'll get to see a replica of the cottage that was used in filming. So that's really fun. Take a break for lunch. You'll get to see a 19th century castle, um, which is called Kylemore Abbey and Gardens. It's now run by Benedictine nuns, but it's just beautifully restored and it's just this gorgeous, gorgeous white castle. It's really, really pretty. Um, then, oh, all kinds of things. I'm not gonna like go through all the details, but you get to see all of the fun little cities and towns and villages. It's just so amazing um, to get to see all of the areas through this part of Ireland. Okay, then back to your hotel. All right, so this is the last day of this tour, all of this touring outside of Dublin. Um, on this last day, you get to go to Innismore, which is the largest of three islands that are off the coast of Ireland. Um, Irish is the spoken language, but which is a different language from English, but the locals will speak to you in English. There is also English, of course, spoken on the islands. So um, you get to go to Innismore and tour around. There's the seven churches. Um, there's time for lunch. There's... Um, all these fun 
little stops out on the island. And then after that, you'll go back to Galway Station. And from Galway Station, you will get on your train back to Dublin. Okay, then back in Dublin, you check back into the Rio Plaza Gresham Hotel, which is the same one that you stayed at originally. And that is your one final night. And then the next day you will check out from the hotel, get your transportation back to the airport and fly home. Flights from Europe arrive home the same day. So you don't need to worry about an extra day at the end um, for that. So pretty fun, right? Isn't that just a fun itinerary? I think it's so great. I just think it's amazing. Um, to get to sometimes get to, I guess, go through and just see what other people, what other people would like to plan for their trips, right? Um, so what do you think? Isn't Ireland amazing? And if you would be interested in an itinerary similar to this, or if you're you don't want one that's similar to this. You just want to include your own twist. You want to maybe golf or you want other adventures or different things besides what I've mentioned here. Just let me know. I can totally help put it together for you. Um, so if you want to go to Ireland, let's get your Ireland trip in the books. I love that traveling can help us connect. Um, I love that the thoughts of traveling to Ireland, you can connect with all of the fun leprechauns and magic and everything that is there, but also connect with the locals, connect with the country and connect with the people you're going with. So let me help you if you're wanting to help plan a trip to Ireland. If not, then it's really fun to just think about and someday maybe you'll get there and add this to your bucket list. So thanks for coming with me on this Irish journey today. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I would invite you to like, share, or leave a review. Let's help grow our wellness travel community.